Oh, there we go. So we're starting and recording. You can hear me clearly, hopefully. We'll try to be more um, uh, articulate with my English. Um, definitely. Opa, just spilled some of my beer. Uh, guys, welcome to No Censorship. Today we have an episode in English where we're going to learn a bit about um, the Austrian school of um, economy or finance, I guess, right? If I, economics. Uh, find the school of economics. So we're going to learn about that. We're going to learn about many other things. We're going to learn, we're going to talk a bit more casually about other stuff. Uh, of course, I invite everyone to comment, subscribe, and share whatever platform you can see us in or you can listen to us in. That would be preferable. And uh, first of all, we're going to tell uh, hello, hi to Tal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> it's all right. We're filled with technical issues here. Uh, the, the, two the two technicians we have are non-professionals. That's myself and uh, my brother. Um, I like your yeah. shirt, by the way. What do you have over there? What's, what's written over there? I, I, I have no idea. I think it says Blue Angel, which I have Blue no Angel. idea what that's supposed to mean. Where'd you get it from? Or maybe Blue... Uh, the. I, I just a regular store and he said you want something on the shirt and I said sure put something on the shirt and he said what do you want so I said make it as nonsensical as you can <laughs> make it just whatever you got yeah yeah uh well have you done something interesting lately uh dancing <laughs> dancing oh definitely that's, dancing uh, is that, always interesting that's our story I guess that's uh that's where yeah. we met Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's where we met. Um, uh, although I don't remember you asking me to dance. <laughs> don't, don't, I don't know. I didn't, but I do, I did enjoy looking at you from the side. It was a, quite an experience for me, I have to say. I'd say, I'd say it's beautiful. And I like, I like the way, um, like the way you invented kind of new stuff and you just went a bit uh, creative. And I like that. And I like the, the fact that I would have danced and I saw you playing the pongos or something like that. Oh yeah, that's uh, great fun. That, that was I really enjoy that. It really inspired me to want to learn, but not really know other than a basic beat. <laughs> um, but yeah, how's it going with? Uh, I heard you have uh, lectures. You're doing once a month lectures in Israel, right? Yeah, once once a month. This month actually even more than more than once. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I got a lecture next week. Got a lecture the week after that. Maybe even another one. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So what what are the? Despite I kind of know what are these lectures about? What do you talk about? Oh, the end of the universe. Oh, not nah, well. <laughs> well, the end of the world. Well, no, never. Not the end of the world. Just the end of the world as we know it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's start optimistic I'm, I'm, I'm getting i'm getting i'm getting i'm making it less less doom every time <laughs> okay that's uh yeah what what would uh what what aspect of that like everyone says that you know everyone has like the end of the world or the end of humanity is gonna come from a meteor or from something like that what what exactly uh, do you think the end of the world is going to come by? Or well, we, we we definitely have a meteor that uh, you can say that it's it's kind of already hit us, and it's not really a one singular event. I mean, I I started publicly talking about this uh, sometime around 2010, and I started. Uh, talking, then writing articles, then a little bit later started giving lectures. So I've been, been doing this for over a decade. And I and from, uh, let's say from 2010 until 2020, I was talking about the coming economic crisis. And I would often say the biggest economic crisis in modern history. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's that's a big event. But since uh, spring of 2020, I, I pretty much say, yeah, we're, we're in the era of the event. So, yeah, it's, I call it more of an era, not of, a, of, a, of an ongoing uh, timeline, not, not necessarily one specific uh, thing that happens on a certain day. And everybody says, oh, see, that happened. No, it's, 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 it's ongoing. We're, we're, we're still in the, in the beginning 
probably not even middle, maybe beginning to middle stages of it. Mm -hmm. when, the, the when did the escalation start? What kind of events led to this kind of escalation towards? Um... Well, it's, 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 it's an excellent question because, you know, if, you, if somebody wants to solve a problem, you kind of first have to recognize that there is a problem mm -hmm. and then you have to understand the problem and then maybe you can solve the problem. So when did it start? You can go back. Uh, okay, let's, let's take like two or three possible starting points. Mm -hmm. We can go back 12 years to what is often considered the, uh, the, the, the Great Recession or the financial crisis of uh, 2007, 2008, which, which, which was a, um, a, a housing boom and bust in, in many places of the world and, and uh, the... A, a financial system was was in danger back then and uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, uh banker overlords came in and and saved us <laughs> and uh, <laughs> said that uh, see we're, we're we 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 have uh we have an economic recovery and uh, everything's going to be okay and basically, when I started my 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 public uh, uh, articles and and lectures, that I would say no, that all of the problems that caused the two thousand eight crisis were not solved. They were papered over. Papered over is kind of an economic term. It means that they were only superficially made better, but the real problem was getting worse. Right, kind of like if to use very very simple terms, kind of like putting a bandaid on a, on, a, on a cancer wound. Yeah, it's not going to mm -hmm. solve the problem. You're just gonna you're just gonna cover the 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 wound, but but mm -hmm. you're not you're not curing anything, mm -hmm. right? It's uh, it, it, it's it's not even cosmetic. But mm -hmm. so so we can go back and we can say that everything that or or a lot of the things that we're going through now, contrary to what a lot of people think, a lot of people think that this started in in 2020 with the uh, whatever one wants to think of it, the, the, uh, the, 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 COVID, the health the, scare, the, the yeah. health scare, whatever one wants to think of it, whether it's uh, real or not, or, but, but uh, I say no. I say that everything that governments did in 2020 was, was bad and made things worse, but it didn't start then. So I, I don't even choose 2020, not even as one of my origin points. I said, you know, you ask when did it start? And I said, you know, let's let's look at two or three different different times to see where where this started. So one is 2008 oh. where where there was a financial crisis and I say that that nothing was solved. It was only uh, superficially covered and and made much worse. So it blew up again, obviously. So the ones for and, us that did they didn't start to interrupt you. Um the ones yeah. for us who didn't watch the big short. <coughs> okay. I didn't either. <laughs> okay. Sarah asked me. Yeah, he actually said, you have to see that. And I said, you're right, but I still haven't. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's um, yeah. So what how did the 2008 uh, economical crisis came about? Okay, okay, so then we can go back to the what caused what to to a to a previous timeline. <laughs> and uh Okay, I'll, 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 I'll add another one. Before 2008, yeah. there was 2001. Now, in 2001, we had a much smaller bust. It's called the dot-com bust, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, there was a kind of an economic downturn and stuff like that. And what did all of the, uh, the bankers and the politicians do? They, they wanted to get a speedy recovery because that makes them look good. But everything that they did back then was set the stage, set the uh, all of the economic uh, um, uh, flows escalation. Flow, in okay. es escalation in in place that created the the two thousand seven two thousand eight bust, and I can say that as an Austrian economist uh, and and philosopher mm -hmm. that uh, the Austrians back in 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, they were all over the relatively young internet back then, right? Or, you know, YouTube, which was just, just beginning. And you could find them, you know, you had to look for it because, you know, wasn't main, mainstream knowledge, 
but they were warning. They were saying this is going to end in a financial crisis. This this uh, this housing boom. It's going to end in a crash. And of course, they were right. And and you know, they gave all the reasons and stuff like that. So again, if we say that. Okay, so the recording right now is going. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, uh, listeners. Uh, we had a bit of a technology amateurism or malfunction. Let's say it's a malfunction. Like um, a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, like a wardrobe malfunction, yes. Um, yeah, so let's just continue with uh, what we, where we left off. So we talked about um, um, the Austrian uh, economists predicting this during the early 2000s. Yes, so uh, Austrian economists like uh, Ron Paul, like Peter Schiff, you can find them on the on 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 YouTube. Even possibly even as early as two thousand two, two thousand and three, but certainly in two thousand four, two thousand five, and 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 Peter Schiff has his famous uh, uh, lecture in the, from from two thousand six where he accurately, very accurately predicted the, the, the crash of 2007, 2008. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's another, as you can say that, okay, well, how did we get to, to 2022? And, and I skipped over 2020, even though we can say that, yeah, that's kind of a starting date of the, of, of the crash, but what happened, you know, all the health uh, scare and all, and all that, that's, that's, that just exacerbated it. It, it didn't. It wasn't the, the the cause. So we went back to two thousand eight. Now we went back down to two thousand one, and you know we can we can we can go on endlessly. But let's say we'll pick two more dates to to that as Austrian Austrian school economists we can look to and say, yeah, this kind of set the things in motion where we kind of knew where things were going to go, and once you know the direction, once you understand the the currents, the waves. Then it's all a matter of let's say educated guesses as to how long it's going to take, but you know what you kind of know what's going to happen. Okay, so let's go back further now. We could go back to 1971. So that's 51 years ago, and and what happened in 1971? Well, that was the year that that uh, President Nixon took the United States and by proxy basically the entire world off of the last vestiges of of the gold standard. So uh, not only was the United States dollar not uh, backed by gold anymore, uh, since the world was basically using the dollar as the main medium of exchange, that meant that the entire world was off the gold standard for what is very likely the first time in world history where the entire world is on what is known as a fiat money system. Fiat, uh, well, it's from the Latin word fiat, which means, you know, make it so. But fiat money is, is really, it's one, it's one economic term. It means that, that a money that is not backed by any, any physical economic good, which is not always gold. Sometimes it's other things, uh, you know, like, like silver or uh, platinum is possible. But, but you, you, for most of, of of the economic history, it was it was it was gold, and mm. economic uh, Austrian economists back in 1971 uh, could have certainly predict, uh, uh, predicted. Yeah, this this is going to end, and uh, mm. how long does it take? Well, fiat uh, fiat money always ends in in a crash and a burn to to, to zero. Uh, sometimes it's within a few years, sometimes it's within a few decades. And yeah, we're, we're kind of long in the tooth now, five decades, and we can see the system cracking. So yeah, uh, 1971 is definitely a, a very important stage. And one last one that we can, we, we can look towards is, okay, two, I lied, <laughs> 1933 and 1913. 1933 is, is when the United States a partially came off the gold standard where they outlawed gold for regular citizens and gold coins were were called in and and the, the banknotes were no longer uh, redeemable for the private citizens in gold and so there was still kind of a quasi gold standard between governments so it wasn't 
a total uh, abandonment of the gold standard, but it was a very important stage. And then, the, you know, 1913, that's when the central bank was created, the Federal Reserve. So once mm -hmm. the federal bank was, was, was created, and by the way, the same year, the income tax, the United States didn't have an income tax before that. They tried, but, but, but there wasn't. So it, it, you don't even have to be a so-called conspiracy theorist to wonder, hmm, is it just a, just a coincidence that created the central bank and an income tax in the same year? No. <laughs> so but once the but, central bank was was created you mm -hmm. kind of knew okay it's just a matter of time until until things go downhill so now we're going back well over 100 years but but yeah this 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 is all based on logic and and foreseeable events yeah and it's important to mention the austrian school of thought of economy it's first of all it's not like it's not the economy of Austria, okay? No, yeah, no. When you say, when you say yeah. yeah, when you say the Austrian school of thought, or it's, it's kind of school of uh, economical thought, I'd say, it means relying on data in order to make sure, in order to predict um, financial events. Usually. Actually, we, we, we actually leaning on logic. Now, what is logic? Logic, you don't really have logic without having some kind of, of, of looking at, at empirical data also, but the, what makes the Austrian school so much different from every other uh, school of economic thought is that uh, we Austrians, we strive to uh, look at a theory that we know is true because it's based on logic. And then we say, the real world, the empirical data, it doesn't really prove anything. It only mm -hmm. illustrates what we already know. And what is the, let's say, what is the basic uh, logic, um, let's say, thesis or premise the, the Australian School of Economy relies on? We, we, lie, we, we start from what we call the, the axiom of human action, which is also the name of one of the most important books uh, in, in Austrian uh, theory written by Ludwig von Mises uh, and, uh, from 1949, if I remember the year correctly. And mm -hmm. it starts with what we call an axiom. An axiom is something that not only is it true, but it's the highest level in truth in sense that anyone that attempts to argue against the axiom immediately proves himself wrong, right? Which is kind of like a, the, the highest level of truth possible. Uh, let's just say that I say that two plus two is five. I mm -hmm. could be right, I could be wrong, but I certainly haven't proven myself wrong just by saying two plus two is five, right? You know, you, <laughs> someone has to come along and, and prove that I'm wrong. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously it's not, it's not true, but, but just by saying mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that, that, that I'm wrong. But if I were to say, I don't exist. Okay. I'm using mm -hmm. my existence to try and argue that I don't exist. So my, my near uttering the, the, the sentence, I don't exist. I've proven myself wrong. Nobody mm -hmm. has to come along and, and prove anything. They just have to say, tall, you, 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 you proved yourself wrong. I don't have mm -hmm. to prove anything. You just by trying to say that you don't exist, you mm -hmm. you've proven yourself wrong, right? So so that that is an mm -hmm. axiom. So the axiom in 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 Austrianism is a, only is of human action. And what is what does that mean? Human action. It means that we humans we are individuals, right? You are an individual. I am an individual. Even if we're both playing on a basketball team then the team is comprised of five individuals, right? Or, you know, an entire mm -hmm. team, a roster, maybe 15. But yeah, the people playing on the court were five individuals working together for, for a common mm -hmm. goal, but, but we're not one entity. We're not yeah. one body. We're not one mind. We're five individuals that have decided, hopefully non-coercively, <laughs> to work together <laughs> towards a common goal because we we believe in it we're being paid for it we're, whatever for whatever whatever reason yeah so that's the axiom of human action so when we want to apply that to uh, the the science of economics 
we don't look first at aggregate um, uh, statistics, right? Like uh, how much is the GDP or how much is the total supply of something? Those, those statistics might be interesting, right? Because, okay, it gives us knowledge about certain things, but there's no one entity that is buying all of the oranges in the economy. <laughs> there's millions of people that say, yeah, I, I want to eat, eat an orange today, so I'm going to go to the store and buy an orange. And if an orange costs uh, half a dollar, then you, some guy might say, yeah, I'll pay half a dollar for an orange. If an orange costs $10,000, then, you know... Uh, most people will say ah, that's a little bit too expensive for me. So <laughs> it starts with, let's say, the, the smallest number possible of people that can have a transaction, which is two, right? <laughs> if I have a banana and you have an orange and we want to trade because I want your fruit and you want my fruit, then we engage in a non-coercive trade where we agree to give each other the, 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 the fruit the, that, that we have because we want it more. We want what the other guy has more than what we ourselves own. So or that's, we just need it. We need it, want it. No. Yeah, it both but it doesn't, doesn't matter as far as the economics are concerned. So axiomatically, in other words, irrefutably, we know that we both have gained from the non-coercive trade. Otherwise, we wouldn't have traded. Right. If I want yeah. my piece of fruit more than I want your piece of fruit, I'm not going to trade. Right. I don't remember if I had the banana or you had the banana. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> Let's say, uh, okay, I have yeah. the banana, you have the orange. Okay. If I like yeah. my banana and I don't like oranges, I'm not going to trade. But just mm -hmm. the mere fact of me agreeing to trade, it means that I wanted your orange more than my banana. So I gained. And it doesn't matter how much the, the banana costs in the store. It doesn't matter how much the orange costs in the store. It, mm -hmm. it matters that in that instance of trading human action, for whatever reason, I maybe I needed the vitamin C or I was going to die in five <laughs> minutes, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Well, all that matters is, is that I wanted to trade. I agreed to trade. You wanted to trade. You agreed to trade. And the mere fact that we both wanted and agreed means that we both benefited axiomatically. It's, it's impossible to refute this mm -hmm. because okay. by simple necessity of the act of trading, there's an opportunity cost, meaning that we could have done other things. Even if we were in the same room and it didn't cost us much time or money to meet, to make the trade, uh, still, we had to talk about it. We had to offer. We had to agree. We had to walk to the other side of the room. Uh, we had to <laughs> negotiate. We had to negotiate. Whereas most trades, you do have to, yeah, get up out of your house. You have to travel. You have to spend some money traveling. And right, most trades, there is a a definite cost, not just an opportunity cost, but a definite cost. Right, you go to the store, mm -hmm. you spend time that you could have been doing other things. You spend money just getting to the place to make the trade. So yeah, most trades, they there there's a real cost. So the only reason you would engage in those trades is if you feel that the overall end result is beneficial to you. So that's that's human action. And then mm -hmm. we as Austrian economists, we start from these kind of little things that seem almost insignificant. And then we extrapolate and we say, okay, if we know this orange banana trade is, <laughs> is, is, is uh, axiomatically beneficial, impossible mm -hmm. to refute, then if yeah. we say, okay, if that's true for two people, that's true for 20 people, that's true for 2 million mm -hmm. people, that's true for 2 billion people, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't change. The, the underlying logic is, is always there. So then we Austrians can, can uh, take the logic of things that we know to always be true and look at very, very big events and come to conclusions looking at the underlying currents and say, okay, this is, this is gonna happen. Exactly when I can try and give a good ed educated guess, 
And sometimes we're very, very good at these educated guesses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we miss, but sometimes we're but quite often we're, we're very, very good. Yeah. And then we know we know we know what's going on. And, okay. Uh, I understand. Like just it's very important to mention the philosophy that the <laughs> trade is beneficial to both parties is axiomatic. It's completely it's, true. It's it's but irrefutable. It's, it's, it's irrefutable. irrefutable. And and why is that? Because let's say that yeah. somebody comes along and say, no. A non-coercive trade is not mutually beneficial. Yeah, but how I is, think how is he think, how is he automatically wrong? You know how? Yeah, because it's always because he's first of all he doesn't do the trade himself. Well, actually, just just the fact of somebody arguing with me, he's he yeah. is in a sense making a trade of arguments. In other words, he doesn't <laughs> have to argue with me. He could say, why yeah. do I want to argue with this Austrian when I could go to the beach and 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 uh, look at the uh, pretty people on the sand? He's choosing to yeah. argue with me because for whatever reason, he feels that his life is enriched by engaging in, a, in an argument. So by the mere fact of choosing to argue with me that, that, uh, that a, a mutual exchange is not beneficial, he's proven himself wrong. Because <laughs> he's chosen to 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 engage in argumentation. Yeah, uh, but I would say to so always, not always the choosing and engaging in uh, on, like the specific kind of trade. It's not always beneficial. Sometimes when a woman, when a person, not a woman, sorry, that that came out wrong. Uh, <laughs> when someone is engaging with you in an argument of somehow. Um, sometimes it's not for any kind of uh, like, not any kind, but mostly it doesn't gratify anything. Well, the mere fact that that somebody that chooses to engage in argumentation with me, when I'm not holding a gun to his face and saying, "Okay, you're going to argue with me," then 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 by necessity that means that he has chosen, even if he hates my guts, right? Even if he's steaming mad. He doesn't have to stay there. He can go to the beach and look at pretty people on the sand. But he has chosen to continue arguing with me, with me, which means that by mere fact of his choosing to do so, for whatever reason, he feels that he's benefiting from the from the argument. Uh, right? Even uh, even if he does it, he still even, feels that even, even if he even even if he's extremely frustrated for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Right? And the it's argument like, making him more frustrated. Yeah. Then, then, <laughs> if you don't like it, then stop, stop talking, stop talking to the guy. Which is why <laughs> there is always the uh, the emphasis of non coercive uh, engagement in transactions. There are really only two options. There are only two ways to engage in in uh, transactions with one's fellow man. It's either coercive or non-coercive. There's nothing else. Yeah. <coughs> so non-coercive. It is black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in situations where, let's say, one is is compromised, mm -hmm. right? Let's say that you're driving down the, the 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 highway in the middle of the night, and your car breaks down. Okay, so you're in, you're in a bad situation. Let's say you don't have any kind of insurance. Nobody's going to come and uh, uh, pick you up. And, and let's say you know I'm driving down and uh, and I see you and I'm a I'm a mechanic and uh, I stop and I say, oh yeah, well, I I see your problem and uh, look, I can fix your car for you, but it's gonna it's gonna cost you five thousand dollars. And you say five thousand dollars? Come on, you know my garage can probably fix this for just a few hundred. And I say, well, yeah, but you're here in the middle of the night and getting a tow truck will probably cost you a few hours and a few hundred dollars. And then you got to, you know, you got to wait for everything. And I'm, I can fix it within an hour. And, you know, we can argue about the price. And maybe you can argue that I'm trying to look with my air quotes here, take advantage mm -hmm. of you, but I'm not forcing you to do anything. Right. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not coercing you. I'm, I'm making you an offer. You know, and maybe I'm a son of a by for 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 charging such a high price because I can see that you're in a compromised position. But if you accept, that means that you would rather have your car fixed within an hour for five thousand dollars than wait a few hours for the tow truck 
and then go tomorrow to get your, your car fixed and maybe you only spend the total of 1000. Mm. So even that it's, it's, it's non-coercive trade. Nobody's yeah. forcing anybody to do anything. Yeah. Um, which leads us to the basically the definition of capitalism, the yes. free market. Yes. Okay. The, the, what, like, you just touched the philosophy of non-coercive uh, negotiate, no coercive deals or, or ex exchange. Um, how would you define, how would you take that philosophy into capitalism? How does capitalism that... is one of the most misunderstood words in the world today. It doesn't even, doesn't even matter what language, uh, yeah. but the, 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 the simple understanding and definition, which I'm not making up, but the simple definition of capitalism is just what we describe non-coercive trade. I have a banana, you have an orange, we agree to trade. Capitalism, that's all it is. It's not uh, greediness, it's not uh, uh, old guys uh, smoking cigars in back rooms uh, going like this with their hands. And you know, it's maybe they do that, but that's not what makes them capitalists. What's but what makes someone a capitalist is if he supports the ideology of non-coercive trade. And it doesn't even matter if there's money involved, right? It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it goes into philosophy, right? If I be the banana and the apple or the banana and the orange, there was no money. Yeah, both of them are probably worth some kind of money. But even if, let's say, you want to invite someone to dance, the mere act of you going to that to that person and saying, "Would you like to dance?" instead of coming with a with, with a club or a knife and saying, "You're going to dance with me," okay, that's 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 the difference. Turn really, <laughs> turn really dark but true. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, that's the difference. Between, um, yeah, okay. It's, it's it to put it very. It's the difference between romance and rape. All right, in both in both in both instances, you might have some kind of uh, sexual contact, but but the 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 difference is is obvious to us all. One is is consent, and and the other is 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 not. One is is moral, the Grotesque. other is not. Is yes, right, and um, that, and that's something we all understand because you know there there is no culture I think on earth that you know they do not understand that rape is is immoral and and it's evil egg even even rapists understand you know mm -hmm. the, the deep inside which is why even in you yeah. know in the, in the in the in the in the prisons or something like that uh, the, from what i hear anyway <laughs> the rapists are, are are considered you know low they're considered because it's not like you uh, maybe other crimes well, I, I don't know i think i think uh well if if we uh well, I don't want us to go off the subject that much. Yeah, I, I kind of got, I got um, off a little yeah. bit, but it's, yeah. but it's I, I, what I was trying to do with the, with the rape and romance example is just yeah. give it in, in terms that we all, we, we, we basically all understand, not on a, not only on a moral level, but even on a, on a basic emotional level, we all understand yeah. that. So all, all, all uh, we Austrians and, and freedom minded people are saying it should be that way with, with, with everything. Mm -hmm. make someone yeah, an offer and, and and what's and and it's something that i find very interesting is today people don't choose to define themselves capitalists but they choose to define themselves as libertarian yeah then, I, what is exactly the difference between these two things because it sounds yeah i i for, for several sure. years now i have a kind of distanced myself from from that label because I think it's less, it's less precise. Hmm. Because uh, some uh, libertarians do support some level of, of uh, interventionism, government interventionism, which is necessarily in, includes coercion. So, okay, hmm. if, you're, if you do support some level of coercion, then are you a capitalist? It's it 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 gets messy. So I don't get insulted if somebody calls me a libertarian, but for probably almost a decade now, I don't label myself as a libertarian. But as a broad generality, we could say that libertarianism is the ideology of either no government at all, 
or very, very, very little government involvement in in the the, the life of the the citizen of the the uh, the humans living in a in a geographical area. Okay, so before we get to um, um, I'm still in the thing. So what does that mean, socialism? To be honest, socialism. Cause... It sounds like it sounds, you know, almost like such a wonderful world, like like word, like social. Who doesn't say... want to be social, right? You go dancing, yeah. you're being social. You sit down with friends, you're being social. But no, the yeah. the uh, the definition, which of course I'm not making up. This is from you know Webster's Dictionary or probably other major English English dictionaries as well. The definition of socialism is government ownership of all property. But what, what, how does government come to be ownership of anything? Government is just, you know, uh, usually either it's not, it's not, it's never really only one person, if there, even if there's one, you know, supreme mm -hmm. leader. It's, it's a small group of people that are claiming the right to ownership or, you know, uh, which really is control of property that they didn't create and they didn't buy. So it's theft. Okay, we have a word for that, theft. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. socialism is government ownership of all property. And that's <coughs> by essence mm -hmm. and by definition, that's coercive trade. It's not non-coercive trade. So socialism is the most anti-social uh, ideology that exists that that's possible yeah, it, okay so it's it's very important to mention <coughs> just the, the definition of it the specific definition is that it doesn't mean all um all means of every all, all properties yes uh, it does it means meaning. all property everything that's, it means government I, owns I'm, everything I, i'm looking at the definition right now sorry uh it means a political and economic theory of social integration who advocates that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned, that's right, owned, or regulated. It means they could be regulated. They don't have to be owned. Yeah, but that's that's pretty okay. much the same thing. Because if you regulate something, that's yeah, de facto you... ownership, right? If, if, if you have a house, and that mm. house is under your name, as if you own it, but I get to tell you how many people you can have in your house, what times you're allowed to turn the air condition on, uh, who you can sell your house to, if you're yeah. even allowed to uh, sell your house, you know, it's whatever you want to invent. Do you mm. really own the house? No. No, <laughs> just to just I own it just as much as they allow me to. Exactly. You know, that's that's exactly what it means. They, so, I own it, but <clears throat> I'm not being allowed to do everything I want with it. Which technically means that I do not really you, you own don't, it. You don't really own not, it. I don't really, I don't really hundred percent own it. Yeah, I or... own what is what they allow me to own. Like if I want to put a nice flower in the garden, that's cool. Or bring a pet, it's fine. But if there's suddenly curfew, that's or maybe, really owning... or maybe, or maybe even the government says you're not allowed to have a, a cat, you're not allowed to have yeah. a dog. You know, not, uh, not 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 because it bothers the the neighbor or something. It's because the government says so. And now, as far as let's say means of production, hmm. I, I I don't have the Webster's dictionary in front of me now. But uh, okay, a few different dictionaries might have a different few different variations. But basically, everything is either a product of or itself a means of production, right? If if you say an apple, well. Okay, maybe an apple is not the means of production itself, although you could say it is, right? For you to produce something, you need to eat. So an apple is, a, is in, in that sense, it is a means of production. But even if you just say the, the, the land used to uh, grow the apple, okay, then if the government owns all of the land and they decide what to do with the land, then they can say, okay, there's not going to be any apples because we, we own the land and we're not going to allow anybody to grow apples. Only, only bananas, or you know, only onions, or only, only whatever. So, yeah. even by that definition that you gave me, it it mm -hmm. is a de facto ownership of of everything, including, mm -hmm. including all of the humans, because mm -hmm. what is 
a, a human itself, if not the means of producing something, right? You have you have a brain, you have hands. Um, if you are a woman, uh, then you have the means of production of, of human life. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, means of production means ownership of everything, de facto. Yeah, I understand. Okay, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> and um, so, so which, which brings us to a different thing. So we said <clears throat> socialism is uh, the fact, the ownership of the government on the, or, or regulation of, of the things, which actually makes it not yours, makes it de facto the government's. Yeah, and if what and if, if we go what, to yeah, can I can I give an example? There 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 were, there were yeah, two you, socialists. You gave one, but go ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give two two of well, two two real life examples in relatively modern history. There was a Nazi Germany and there was Soviet Russia. Now, supposedly, these were two very different countries, right? One was supposedly communist and one was supposedly socialist. But they, yeah. it, it's really the same ideology. Socialism is, is the same as communism. Now, in, in, in Soviet Russia, the government outright owned the property. In Nazi Germany, much of the property was on paper, on private hands, but the government told the, the, the owners of the property everything what they could do, right? If you owned a factory in Nazi Germany, then the government told you what you could produce, how much you could produce, what you could sell it for, who you were allowed to hire, what you were allowed to pay them. In other words, they, they controlled, they regulated everything. So were you really the owner of the factory? No, only on paper, but, but you weren't really. The, so so it, it was two different approaches to the same ideology, which is socialism. So communism is just more plain. Communism is, if you look under the, 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 the definition of, of communism, it means collective ownership but what is a collective a collective doesn't really exist we talked about that we we we, we talked about that uh, in 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 not only in austrianism but in philosophy in general in you know in in the metaphysics what does exist i exist you exist but we as a a, a unit no we're two individuals we're not one entity a collective doesn't exist so there's no such thing as collective ownership because a collective doesn't exist. So what it de facto means, it comes, out, it comes back to government ownership, whether you call it a government or a junta or, or, or you know, any kind of a supposed group ownership. So yeah, socialism and communism, they're synonyms. Yeah, they're always there they are synonyms but not complete synonyms complete synonyms you know I mean? complete there, there's, complete there's, complete there's no difference complete, there's no such there's no, by the way there's no uh, include like <laughs> i took a degree in english there's no such uh, thing as a complete synonym well no word is completely the same layer as the other one but i would say yes what the technically like according to what you're saying what the alleged communist um philosophy basically is socialism it let's put it leads put it, to the same stuff it leads to exactly the same stuff anyone that thing. says that he supports socialism but opposes communism is nonsensical it's like saying that i oppose murder but i but i support uh, the poisoning and assassination uh, but even that you can find differences but between socialism and communism no, it's uh, it's it's impossible to say. It's impossible to logically say that one mm. supports one but opposes the other. It's nonsensical. I, I I wouldn't say they would don't oppose the other, but I'd say if someone says I support socialism but don't support um, communism, I'd say you basically support what communism leads to. Well, it's not what it. They they both lead to the same thing. I yeah. mean, even even the Soviet Union. What is the what is the mm -hmm. full name of the Soviet Union? USSR, mm -hmm. Union of Soviet Socialist or so, so, Socialist Socialist Soviet Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, mm -hmm. right? USSR. Mm -hmm. So which leads, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, okay. It's, it's, so it's, so, it's, so it's I understand what thing. you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about like if if we take that? 
if you already talked about the USSR, you know, the, the, the person that just, well, that just sort of dismantled the USSR just died not long ago, Gorbachev. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, do hmm. you have any thoughts about that? Like, I do. It's not, I got, I remember some jokes from, uh, what's his name, from, the, that there was a, an American president really Ronald liked Reagan. Him. Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Yeah. I love his, I love his, yeah. group, but his, his, his communist jokes are just, terrific. I can tell yeah. you one. I can, I remember one out of my head. I, I remember them, but yeah, you, you, you might be, you probably tell them better than I do. Or yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. So there's, I told Tussar like the other day, it goes like this. It's, um, um, there's like, there's like two different scenes and places you see, um, a, a communist cop, um, that's on the motorcycle, like a pair of cops that were on the motorcycle. And they got a call. They said, guys, this is communist Russia. It's equality. Uh, if you see a car speeding, doesn't matter if it's a, uh, it's, if it's a government official or the, the, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you give them a ticket. And they said, okay, no problem. And the, in the meantime, Gorbachev was uh, late for a meeting, for a very important meeting. And um, so he told his driver, um, listen, you have to, like, I, I, we're really late for that meeting. I really need to hurry. Go to the back. I'll drive the car. I'll do everything I can. You know that joke. Okay, so so, so Gorbachev took, took the car and drove up. And suddenly he gets to these two motorcycle cops. And they see the car speeding. So one of the, one of the officers just go ahead, just speeds up and goes and catches it up uh, to give it a ticket. But then he turns back to join his partner. And so his partner says, why didn't you give him a ticket? Uh, the, 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 more, the other guy says, well, I saw that the guy was, was too important. I couldn't give him a ticket. He's like, hey, they gave us to give a ticket to anybody. Who was it? And then the motorcycle says, the motorcycle bike <laughs> says, well, I don't know who it was, but its driver was Gorbachev. <laughs> <laughs> who could be above that, huh? <laughs> Yeah, there's there's another one that I remember. Um, there was a communist uh, um, officer. He saw his friend down the street around eight. Okay, so he was there with the, with another with another soldier over there. So he saw his friend. Both of them saw his friend. Suddenly, the officer shot his friend, just like that. Just shot him, and and uh, the other officer says, "Hey, why'd you shoot him?" Uh, well. And then, and then the, the other one says, he says, um, well, it's current, like, because of curfew, you can't be outside. But then he said, yeah, but curfew is like an hour. Yeah, but he's my friend. I know where he lives. He would never make it on time. <laughs> I, never make it on time. <laughs> I don't think I heard that one. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so he, has, he has several of them. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Wow. But, you kind of, uh, you kind of gave me a, you kind of gave me a, um, Wow, it's it's kind of an association thing, but uh, the, I think one of yeah. the movies where you have like pre-crime, I think it was a movie with Tom Cruise, right, where they were they were starting to the, the, like like this you know uh, AI technology that could predict people that were going to commit crimes, and they they start. I don't remember yeah. the name of the movie, but yeah, kind of gave me an association to that. Oh, right, go ahead. No, that's, that's well, all. So I remember what do you think right about now. yeah? Cool. Oh, so what go do we ahead. think about Gorbachev? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think Gorbachev was much more popular in the mainstream West media than he was in Russia it, it, itself. And I think there are a few reasons for that. Uh, was Gorbachev, Gorbachev really this pro-freedom, I wouldn't even say capitalism, but let's say smaller, not even small, you know, I'm trying to be uh, delicate here, uh, or uh, not even small government, but smaller government, more pro freedom guy. No, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of a Western media myth, and it's 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 not too hard to understand, you know, how that myth was created and and uh, and uh, generated over a few decades, uh, because well, I mean, obviously he was the last leader of the the. The, the Soviet Union, you know, and the, the, the what were what were his two uh, catchphrases, Perestroika and then Glasnost, which would you know was right. I, I hope I'm pronouncing yeah, the words so. correctly. 
But mm -hmm. if we look at, at uh, Gorbachev's policies in the years before the dismantlement of the, the, the Soviet Union, then we can see that no, this, this guy was, was, was a full believer in socialism. And only after socialism failed so entirely miserably, then he, he kind of, I say kind of gave up. Because if we can say that maybe the one best thing that he did do was that he, he didn't uh, continue until the entire, entire annihilation of, of, of the Russian people. Right. He at some point he he gave up uh, and 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 stopped, but much more be not because he didn't believe in socialism. And you know, I think even after, you know, he he may have regretted not trying more. No, see, he was still a socialist, he was still a, a, a believer, but but real life, uh, what any Austrian economist since 1920 could have told him. Because Ludwig von Mises, uh, perhaps the most important and prominent Austrian economist, wrote an article in 1920 and then a full book in 1922 entirely destroying the idea of socialism uh, as an economic viability. So mm -hmm. the entire Soviet experience of, of tens of millions of people dying you know, in, in, in camps in Siberia, from hunger, from all, all kinds of horrible things, the, you know, the Holodomor, and, and, and it could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. So Gorbachev wasn't this, you know, pro-freedom guy mm -hmm. uh, in, in the true sense. Uh, but... Uh, you're just kind of uh, kind of kind of lucky to be the guy that that uh, everything collapsed in, in on his watch and he said you know, I give up <laughs> I retire <laughs> and uh, so I, th I think that's how she should be remembered the guy that gave up on something that was really bad anyway that was really bad anyway and 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 he gave up after he failed miserably and even then i don't think he really i don't think he really learned uh, his lesson i don't think i think he he probably still believed oh if i had just done things better you know or there's the, there's a meme that uh, you can find on the internet that it wasn't real socialism and you see all these millions of skulls lying around uh, you know mm -hmm. but the tr true hardcore socialists and communists you know will say Oh, that wasn't real socialism. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, like, yeah, they like hundred percent of the attempts that were tried to construct a, a completely equal society has have failed. Completely yeah, although, although, failed. Although, although equal, that uh, in death, yeah. socialism doesn't mean everyone is equal. Socialism actually means sometimes socialists try to say that that's what socialism is, that we're all equal. No, yeah. the real meaning of socialism is government ownership of all property. So it, it, socialism doesn't even mean equality. Socialism... So why would you say, uh, yeah, I understand. So why would you say people that say we want equality of outcome or equality of income or something like that? Mm hmm. Mm, like, I would say what, they're what, how does that fit? I, I would say they're yeah. delusional because we, we're we're we are not all equal in the sense of our abilities, right? Yeah. You're probably we haven't gone one on one, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you're a better basketball player than I am, <laughs> right? <laughs> next next time we meet, maybe I'll prove you wrong, but but until then. I'm gonna guess that you know you're a better basketball player than I am. You know, you. Well, are, are we are, are are we equal? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, now, do I have a better hairstyle than you do? Definitely. I agree with that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. Right, it's, I'm gonna go that hairstyle very soon. Is yeah, uh, shiny, shiny, yeah, shiny, shiny bald hairstyle. Yeah, I would okay. go with that very soon too. Um, I would. I would also I, say. I, I have. I have. This. This. This is. This is the. Okay. Now the the theory is is that at some point in life, you have yeah. so much brain power, there's just no room for hair. 
<laughs> okay, now that's the theory, and I'm yeah. sticking with it. Okay, I, I, I yeah, haven't definitely. proved this axiomatically, but, uh, <laughs> but that's, I'm going to go with the theory. It serves me very well. Yep, let's go. So, so back to yeah. equality. So, you know, are we equal? I mean, you could say we're equal in the sense that we're both humans, that we both have uh, the right to life, that we both have, I don't know, two eyes uh, and, and two ears, but even that, not, we're not all equal. Some people are born blind. Does that mean they're lesser humans? No, it means they're probably going to be not as good as, at driving as we are. Yeah. It's and it's fair. It's fair. It's it's. it's like I mean, I had... you could even say it's unfair, but that's 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 nature. That's not. Uh, I mean, uh, no. socialism is is a, a foolish attempt at a revolt against nature. It's like saying, I mean, mm. are women and men equal? What does that yeah, even had, mean? I mean, we we're, 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 we're both yeah. we're both humans. Yeah, I mean, men are human, right? Yeah, we're men are men. Are, so, <laughs> so, but but are women and men equal? Well, on average, men are taller, physically stronger. If you're if if you're interested, I can actually comment on that. So, sure. What happens is we're actually more of the same, but the differences are in the like if we don't talk about of course about having babies and stuff like that, which is completely different. Um, but if we're talking about psychological <clears throat> differences, the differences and physical differences, uh, I mean like athletic differences, um, the differences are usually on the, on the, on the extreme. Okay. Yeah. So like, like let me ask example, you. example, okay. the most violent people in society are probably going to be men. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or even even to the other side, the tallest people in society are probably going to be men. Let me ask you or, this. How many yeah. women have you met in, in, in your lifetime that were taller than you? Few. I have met. Okay. Few, yeah. But, How tall are you? Uh, but that, I'm for six the, foot for three. The, six foot three. All right. Yes. There's, the, there's, there's, a, there's an American woman in, in a Russian uh, prison now who I think is taller than you. Yes. Yeah, she's significantly taller than me. She's six foot, she's yeah, she's six foot nine. She's nine or she's seven. taller than me. I thought she was a little bit shorter than well, six. Foot I nine. think she's nine. I think she's nine. You could be uh, right. I, she, but she's not, uh, to be honest, she's I, I, I weigh more than her. Yeah, yeah, like, you probably, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overweight or something. I'm just me. Yeah, you're very you athletic. I mean? Yeah, I'm just me. Um, yeah, but. I'd say I'd say there are there are differences and they are there. And, yeah. Um, but I mean, and, so and this no, is this I'd is say, not to, yeah. this is not to brag or say that that men yeah. are better or women are better. I mean, this is this is nature. It's like yeah. it, 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 I mean. But by the way, if you're interested, yeah. women are better than men in shooting. They're more accurate than men in shooting. Well, is, there yeah. might be reasons for that. Yeah, it's it's about the way uh, it's, our eyes built. Yeah, it's yeah. like a man home man comes home for work, and uh, mm -hmm. the woman and 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 uh, he asks his wife, you know, did you miss me? And she says, well, with every bullet so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm just I'm so yeah. Just, equality, uh, so equality, e e the the whole equality thing, uh, it's it's. It's nonsensical. It's it's an excuse for government interventionism into mm. things that 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 are often just just nature. Yeah. So I, I need to fix that. Sorry, mm. and, and I need to fix what I said earlier. I always want to be accurate. In pistols, yeah. men are better usually with pistols, but with rifles, uh, women have a slight edge. Interesting. Yes. It's women are better than women it. are generally better at seeing colors yeah. at seeing the the differences yes. be, between hues different 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 yeah. colors so which which we can we kind of writing off again sorry it's my fault this time we're um, all having fun here <laughs> yeah. so yeah we were talking which, about equality but yeah. i think we have yes so yeah which brings us i think <clears throat> you know like like 
politicians um, usually use these equality and and these kind of things, these kind of claims as to gain popularity, pretty much. They use other stuff too. Yeah, this this is what we call a very often cultural Marxism or cultural mm -hmm. communism, but, but cultural Marxism is a more common term. And what does that mean? It means it's, it's a method of uh, generating a victimization, the, the feeling of being a victim, even when, you're, even when someone is not a victim, but if you can cause someone to get angry because they feel like a victim, then yeah, they'll want to support some politician which comes along and says, you're a victim, I can, I can fix this if you vote for me. And yeah, it's kind of like if, if women earned less than men, on average, are they, being, are they victims? No, not really. Hmm. But, well, it's, it's, but it's often being used as if they were being, if, if, as if they were victims. Yeah, because they don't see the entire picture. They don't say, okay. They don't say the entire picture of why women on average learn, earn less than men. And there's, you know, someone that wants to study this in general, they can, they can, mm -hmm. they can go see a lot of videos by, by Thomas Sowell or who's not yeah. an Austrian but, economist, by the way, but you can also see many no. Austrians that, that, that talk about this. But, but the, the, the general mm -hmm. explanation is, is that women often make life decisions that lead to mm -hmm. them uh, earning less the, than than men, and that's that, that's often a good thing. <laughs> it means they're doing stuff that they really want to do instead of just worrying about making money. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say something about like you mentioned Thomas Sowell, and I checked some of his like some of his articles. I haven't read most, some. Of, I haven't read a book of his just yet. It will happen. Okay, I'm sure of it. But I have seen some things that he explains about, for example, about. Um, um, slavery in the U.S. Okay, which I found very interesting because there was slavery in the U.S. and they they teach it very much in schools and there was discrimination in the U.S. and they teach it, which is fine. But they forget to mention that U.S. was a mild case of slavery if you actually look at the history as a whole and even history of that time. Yes. Okay, like if you look at the history, like what happened in, in what happened in uh, Africa back that time, that was there was really bad cases of slavery over there, really really bad, and and I found that interesting when he said that, and I checked up on it, and he was right. And is that <coughs> another case of of some side of cultural Marxism? Yes. Maybe <clears throat> to <the> point. <clears throat> To a large, to a large degree, yes. Uh, I mean, all slavery is evil. So you know, as as freedom Definitely. advocates, we we oppose all forms of slavery. But you know, would you, if you have to choose, let's say, between being a slave in the uh, early United States or let's say a slave uh, in one of the uh, Islamic countries, you know. Uh, uh, I'd be willing to make an educated guess that the slavery in the United, in the United States was, was, was much less harsh. Mm -hmm, definitely. And you also have to mention that, like, you, you know the phrase, um, another day, another dollar. You heard yes. about that, right? You know that one. That was an actual phrase where people worked a whole day and earned a dollar. Well, maybe a dollar yeah. is worth a lot more. And that, you know, that brings us yeah, back to the, to, to, to the money issue. Yeah, uh, yeah, which brings back to an issue, but there, there, there was no, it wasn't simple times. Obviously, like, obviously, it wasn't simple times. Which actually, actually, you did speak. I, I wanted to just to back up a little bit. You said about the dollar thing, um, and and you touched a little bit about inflation earlier. You said, well, if someone wants to sell an orange in ten thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or five dollars or whatever, and I think what what deter like you said the gold standard and and you spoke about um changing the gold standards and stuff like that so i would like to a bit scroll back to that like what is inflation and how do you assess the value of something with dollars 
or Australian dollars or whatever coin that is. We're going to touch base with that later on too, because we have an advice in that in that regards. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So so inflation is also one of those words that is almost entirely misunderstood. And here we have an even bigger problem compared to, let's say, the other terms we talked about, because the other terms we talked about, I said, you know, open a dictionary, go look at a dictionary, right? I'm not making stuff up, but here, even the dictionary is kind of problematic because the definition of inflation was distorted and changed even at the level of the dictionary. So I uh, say that to really understand what inflation is, it's not enough to open a modern dictionary. You have to go to a dictionary that's probably probably at least 70, maybe even 80 years old to, to see the true and original uh, and correct definition of inflation. Inflation is an increase of the money supply. That is what inflation is. Mm -hmm. And even if we look at, at the etymology of, of the word, in other words, how, does, how is a word derived which doesn't always give us the meaning of a word, but you think, what is inflation? Inflation is to inflate. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. to rise. It doesn't mean even to raise something, right? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I lift something up in the air, I'm not inflating it. I'm no, raising it's like a balloon. it. I'm raising it. But to inflate, mm -hmm. exactly. It means like a balloon. You inflate the balloon. You make it mm -hmm. bigger by infusing it with, some, with, with air. So the money supply doesn't rise, it inflates. Prices mm -hmm. can't inflate. Prices can go up or go down, right? The banana mm -hmm. can cost $1, it can cost $1,000. That's not inflation. That's mm -hmm. increase in the price. So Increase in value. In, increase in, well, in price, because value is subjective. Oh, okay. Right, so you can say, Tal, I will sell you my banana for 1,000 uh, Australian dollars and nothing less. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how oh, much right. I value it. That is the, that's, it's valuable to me. And I can say, well, you know, that's fine. It's your banana, but I'm not going to buy it because I can buy a ban banana at the, at the store here for, for, for a dollar, maybe even less than a dollar. But, but you uh, value your banana much more than I value your banana. So I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to trade for it. Uh, yeah. But the price, your the price is one thousand dollars. Yeah. So at, inflation, at, the yeah. So inflation so is inflation. increase of the money supply. Now, inflation mm -hmm. in the era of fiat money, which means basically a government-controlled money supply, even though the central banks are supposed to be somewhat independent, but but basically <laughs> it's another it's another branch of government de facto. So when we have a fiat money uh, system, inflation is always, always a government policy. Always. Now, prices can go up. Prices can go down. There are many things that can affect the prices. Uh, if you have a drought, right? If you have horrible weather, then you know, maybe fruits and vegetables are going to cost more. But that's not inflation. Yeah, that's um, what do you call it? That's rising it prices. That's rising prices. Yeah, that's it's supply and demand. It's supply and demand. It's like if yeah. tomorrow morning people, uh, everybody in the world for some reason wants twice as much chocolate as they want now, then in the short term, yeah, prices of chocolate are going to go up because people are going to buying much more than the stores have. And it takes time for the factories to adjust. So, yeah, prices will go up. That's not inflation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I understand. But, but so, in, inflation is so an increase in the money supply. And, and for the past two years, basically all governments in, in the world, uh, certainly Australia included, uh, yes. has, has seen massive inflation. I even checked that the, the Australian money 8. supply 5. has gone up about, about 30%. In other words, about 30% of all of the Australian dollars that ever existed were created in the last two years or so, or two and a half years. Just think of that. All the uh, Australian uh, uh, dollars that ever existed, 
uh, uh, about 30% of them or something like that, something to that effect, were created I just in the last couple of years. I didn't know that it was 30%. We have been told that it was around the 8.5. But, and then what they did is- Well, like, if you go look, if people, like wanna, if people want to look this up, they can go look for uh, M3, uh, Australian money supply. Just, uh, you know, look it up on the internet. You'll find all kinds of uh, sites that'll, you know, some, some, something will eventually take you there. And, you know, you just look it up. <laughs> And compare also, what, what was it uh, say in 2020 or 2019 and uh, mm -hmm. what is it today? And, you know, yeah. I also found out that in, in causes of inflation, what happens is sometimes the salaries increase and like when there's inflation, there's a more supply of money. So sometimes the salaries increase according to the supply of goods that you need. Okay. Because you need to eat an apple and now the inflation can make made more supply of money which caused the apple to be to cost more money exactly and what's okay. what's been happening so, and you know in many places but if we want to talk about mm -hmm. it you know maybe i'll refer as a, a little bit to more specific to australia yeah i mean have wages gone up in australia in you know in the yeah. last uh, months or maybe year yeah wages have gone up but prices yeah. average prices have gone up more than wages so you know, yes. somebody is is or was if somebody was earning, you know, ten thousand Australian dollars, and now he's earning mm -hmm. a, a say eleven thousand, but but prices have prices have gone up more than his wages. He's worse off. So yeah, this this Definitely. is what has happened. This is what has happened. This this is real life uh, empirical data. Yeah, and also what happened actually, in order to counter that a little bit, what an interesting thing that also happened lately that the prices of goods actually decreased because of the government decided to go on a less tax policy, like they decreased the taxes policy. So actually the price of goods has decreased lately in the past month or so, which is interesting, but I'll get well, to that I, later. What I would look into, because mm. I see this happening, let's say here uh, mm. in Israel, is that here and there, the government is, is a lowering uh, some some taxes but they're not lowering expenses which means that they're not really lowering taxes what do you mean not okay lowering expenses. If, ah. if 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 somebody, okay i got it i understood i understand understood. Understood. which Sorry. means that they're, 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 they're really just increasing the deficit spending which means that they're increasing future taxes which is even worse yes. than increasing taxes so so uh, I'm actually not sure about that because <clears throat> I, I I read in other researchers that when you actually decrease taxes, you earn more taxes. That's a common myth. Now there is yeah. it's 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 not entirely untrue because mm. okay there is what is called I think the 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 Laffer curve. Now if we take the uh, we won't go too into it because I don't want to bore people with you know deep <laughs> uh, economic mumbo jumbo. But to put it very very simply. If taxes are 0%, then obviously there's zero taxes, right? Now, if taxes are 100%, it's still zero taxes because everybody's dead. Nobody can produce anything, right? So <laughs> it doesn't matter if taxes are zero or 100%, it's both zero taxes. So somewhere in the middle, you could say, is the so-called, and look at the air quotes, everybody sees the, the air quotes, the somewhere is the so-called optimal point where you can tax people the most and they'll still go out to work because yeah, they are they want to survive and they want to feed their kids. Uh, but So there is sometimes some truth to that where you can sometimes lower taxes and get more taxes, but taxation is theft. You shouldn't tax. Yeah. Should not steal, don't rape, don't tax. Bad, bad, bad government. Okay. 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 So, but, but, uh, um, what, what we see, what we do see uh, in Australia now is that home prices are finally coming down a little bit. And yes, we think about buying a home. Well, I would think long and hard. I know I'm not giving financial advice here, yeah. but I am giving people things to think about now. Uh, this we can and again let's look at this from the perspective of austrian economists whereas austrian economists again we we are interested in empirical data 
But what we are more interested in is understanding long-term trends so we can extrapolate and see where things are going, kind of predict the future, so to say. Now, yeah. in, uh, in 1990, or in like in the very early 1990s, the, uh, the, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the, 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 the interest rate was 17.5%. 17 and a half right now yeah, it's I saw one it's 1 1.85 and people are thinking yeah. oh my god it's so high because it hasn't been this high for several years and I yeah, think in I a few also follow that and I think yeah, in a few days that. in a few days I think they're going to raise the interest rates again in Australia because they yeah. raised it I think three times in a row like about half a percent and uh, many people are saying well you know they can't continue raising this a half a percent each time if they get to three or four or five percent you know it could cause a crash and it it probably will but just think 30 years ago it was 17 and a half so for about 30 mm. years there was like a, a an oscillating uh, um, trend of uh, I, raising and lowering and and for two years it was basically zero uh, and now in the last several months they're raising it supposedly to to invite what they call inflation, but it's not really inflation. It's the rate of, of prices going up, which they say is 6.1%, but everybody knows it's not 6.1. It's probably double that, right? Yeah. It's not double. Probably. It's, it's not 6.1. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, but what, what, we, what is happening is that finally, after 30 years of Australians thinking, oh, homes are always going to go up price. That's just what they do because they did for, for over a generation. So now I think prices are going down in Sydney. Prices are going down in, in, in other places, maybe one or two percent. But, but I would it's, tell people, uh, do you think that it's going to stop here because... If we're, I, if we're I, just at the beginning stages, one more sentence, if we're just at the beginning stages of a housing crash, then maybe, maybe it's a good idea to wait, maybe. I'm not telling people I, what to please, do. Please, can I? Sure. Because <laughs> I, I made the research, so I know. What's okay, going yeah, on. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what's going to, what's happening right now is the increase, the interest levels going up. And slowly, really slowly, bit by bit, people are starting to sell. But it's a very slow process because they don't want to get rid of their assets. Okay, because they know that they think that in the long run, it's going to go back to be normal. Long run is 100 years. Like they, <laughs> <laughs> no, they think like, they think like very closely, it's going to be, uh, it's the the housing, like it's just the prices are going to go back up again. Yeah. Uh, and That's you're going to have it. another bubble again. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bet on that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have checked I have checked the interest rates and I know they're going up. Oh, yeah. And um, I know, I also checked what's going to happen. If how how much uh, on average now? Like like six, I'm, I'm, I'm half guessing here about six, seven percent uh, uh, mortgage I'm rate. Uh, I'm not sure at this In minute. In Australia right now? I checked. I checked two weeks ago, and it was around uh, four, three, four. But I'm not sure. I'm, right I'm now. guessing that it's more, but uh, I, I probably that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I so, know. I know that mortgage rates in the United States have have, have pretty much doubled. So I would yeah, be surprised so if they if if they haven't in 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 Australia. And and one in one in some ways, the housing market mm -hmm. is is uh, even more dangerous in Australia. Because most people in the United States, they have fixed rate mortgage, mm -hmm. okay? Most people yeah. in Australia, I think at least 60%, they have yeah. variable rates, which means that, yeah. that, that they, can, they can say, oh, well, prices, uh, mortgages, uh, interest rates have gone up. We better buy now before they go up even, even, you know, even more. But, but yeah, but they go up even, even more. Things that people are not going to be able to afford their, their, their mortgage payments. So we did homes. a calculate. Yeah, so we did a calculation. What ha what's going to happen to the mortgage <coughs> payment, um, even if it goes up to the extreme point of seventeen or twenty percent, which was the highest according to thirty years ago, and we found out that we can we can take it. 
we can do it. So that's, yeah, that's very important to do that. Yes, yes, I yeah. know, I know. I know, I know mm -hmm, a lot of, mm -hmm, but yes, yeah, so we can do it. Um, that's why we're thinking about getting it. That's why I thought about getting it because uh, we can take it. Well, let me, um, let me ask you of, this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. If you think that, that rates are going to go up that high, what is that going to do I, to the price of the house? I don't know, like rates, I, like again, I don't know if we don't know if the rates are probably going to go very high. Don't okay, well, what, what my question high. is, what will that do to the price of the house? Well, it's going to decrease the value, probably. Yeah, by a little or by a lot? By the same percentage. Well, I don't know. But, ah, but, but actually, but, I'm but not sure. It depends, depends it's, how it's, many people have mortgage. It's an educated, it's an educated guess. Yeah, it's an educated guess. Nobody can calculate yeah. exactly. But let's say it's, it's a pretty good guess that if rates go up, much higher than they are now, then prices are not going to go down just by a little bit. They're going to go down drastically. So mm -hmm. uh, one should ask himself, why would I buy a house at today's prices if maybe you can buy it not so far in the future? I don't know, maybe months, maybe a year or two at you know much, mm -hmm. much, much lower prices. Again, nobody knows the exact future, but uh, I think... Well it's it's a safe bet that that yeah. interest rates are going higher from a research with a couple of months they are the the housing price is going lower mm -hmm. yeah is going lower like uh with tens of thousands lower but uh yeah so maybe we're not going to go right away to get one to get a house we might wait a bit more but we're seeing what's going on there's okay a saying there's, a, there's an economic yeah. economic is an investment saying Buy when yeah. there's blood in the streets. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. You buy it in the worst, and you sell it you, when it's best. You 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 buy it when everybody is is so desperate to sell that they'll say, "Please, just take my house. I need something." To... I need a little bit of food. Yeah. Or or in Australia, I just need to buy another van to just travel around till the end of till I die. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the common thing and it's not a bad thing whether it's kind of it's very sweet uh but yeah we'll, we'll take care of it later okay so let's just let's shake up the things a little bit and let's uh go straight to the um questions or advice section whatever we have let's go with that yeah. one one last um, sentence on 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 the housing thing though i i have sure. a scene on the internet and you know you i'm, I'm not in australia but I have seen that there is an issue of construction companies that are collapsing, that are that are going out of business. Um, I don't are, know is, if it's I don't know how serious is, it is, but uh, I, I know I know what's I'm, going I'm, on because my cousin's a contractor. Oh, okay. Um, the problem that he has is not with um, taking jobs is with about not having employees. Mm -hmm. That's the problems that they currently are um, facing. Like that's the problem that contractors have, but they have a program right now to increase um, immigration. Um, ah, government more... will solve everything. That's all we need. Uh, we yeah, need that's... another government program. Yeah, that's, I don't think that will work very well. Yeah, but um, the, I think, what I, I well maybe i don't know exactly what i think based on the data that i learn okay on the on the in the last couple of years um <clears throat> just let the market do its thing yeah like if you don't yeah. if you don't intervene with people going to universities maybe they'll find more sense in actually building something more value and and i've said i say i say i say from personal aspect I have worked in construction mm. um, and I enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed grabbing the hammer and destroying a wall. This is very satisfying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's and, very and, masculine, yeah, very manly. Just, yeah, not just destroying things, also also building up, putting some windows in and uh giving uh giving a key to a family that this is gonna be a, their home and assembling and draw and painting a house. And getting all the little pieces down. So I did some of these works, and that was its own pleasure. It's it's 
it's its own pleasure and coming after coming home after a work day like that you're exhausted but it's something very biological within that you feel it very is. satisfied I'd because say. because, I because, because say. you know you you helped you're helping create something you're helping make yeah. the world a better place because you're 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 I mean, even like you said, when you're destroying something, you're not, you're, you're, you're helping build something. You're helping yeah. take something down to put something better. And yeah, that's, that's, I, that's a good feeling. And it's a, it's, it's a very visceral, yeah. very biological, visceral level. Yeah. Yeah. Like traders in Australia, they, sometimes they, they're not, um, they don't have very good reputation. I'd say sometimes the traders, um, they call them traders, contractors, plumbers, people like that they call them traders here um and uh, and unjustified like some of them are pretty much uh, sobs uh but uh specifically the guy that ran onto me and my bike uh <laughs> uh yeah uh we talked about it later in a, earlier in another podcast with sal um at least he paid for the fix for the damage so yeah yeah um good. after after a good amount of blackmail but yeah You know, wow. about the blackmail amount of um, amount of emails not a blackmail that's not true not not Just a lot of pressure yeah a lot of pressure yes a lot of yeah. pressure like it's it was a very bad translation from Hebrew it means uh, yeah. Right? yeah no yeah no, okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you corrected it's not it a good it's translation. Okay. yeah I corrected it okay but definitely yeah definitely there's very bad reputation for traders and uh, I met good pretty good traders yeah um, even if if good people if good educate like smart people get into trade that would be very interesting i think i um, i smart have, people I, that can work with their hands yeah i mean i inherently inherently have a respect for people that can do something that i can't <laughs> because you know they, a, they 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 can give me something that that either i can't do for myself or Or it's very hard for me to do myself no. it, it doesn't matter if it's fixing something or or, or creating something it was, it's 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 even beyond just like okay yeah have respect for everyone sure yeah but but like somebody that can you know do a service for me so that that you know wow I can't do that you know yeah, it's interesting how do you how do you hang that picture that would have been a way that yeah damage the wall yeah Or, or it's like yeah well you know maybe if I worked five or ten years of practice at it maybe I could do that myself but <laughs> but <laughs> you don't need that much to be honest from personal experience but like one of my favorite shops is it's called Bunnings here mm. and Bunnings is a, is a, <coughs> is mostly it's called it's like um, it's a better version of our home center mm, okay um, you just have a lot of construction a material and good uh, hardware. Um, I like it. I love it. Excellent. Um, okay, let's continue to the advice this time. Okay. Yeah, let's continue the advice. <coughs> okay. Um, or questions. Um, let's take uh, one question. Uh, what happens when inflation goes down in the US but stays high in Europe? Energy costs will stay high in Europe for the foreseeable future, but not in the US. Will the euro lose value relative to the dollar if inflation stays at nine percent in Europe we just spoke about inflation. that's an interesting one what happens if there's an inflation well, I, th- in I think country? first we have to we have to understand what what the, the true definition of inflation was and we said inflation is increasing the money supply so I, I'm not sure what what he's really asking here I mean we have massive inflation basically all, almost all over the world now. So can some prices go up and other prices go down? Yeah, but but we, we see massive, I mean, what I think he's referring to is increases in price increases. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what, he, what he's referring to, actually. I mean, you know, we see energy prices in, in places like Germany that are they're just going crazy. Yeah. And, um, and some of that is because of inflation because of the increase in the money supply and other yeah. parts of it is is uh, political right you know the war with uh, Russia and all the uh, everything that, that's going on with that I have to say that one of the things uh, that Trump did that was good I mean, mm-hmm. one of the things that Trump did he didn't do always good things 
Okay, but one of the things that he did was good. He tried to not to increase the competition in the in the in the gas market, let's say. And he allowed people to drill gas in more places in the US, mm-hmm. gave permission to do that, which considered which made the US gas prices go lower. Mm. Who knew that if you let people <laughs> do stuff, <laughs> if you let people get supply, the supply gets lower. What a trick. Yeah. And um, and the, so the maybe, beauty of it, the beauty of it is it's it's like a well, it's like a self-cleaning oven. In other words, it's a self-regulating thing, the free market. Mm-hmm. Because if you just let people uh, uh, do what they want and decide for themselves what is the best thing for them to do, then yeah, if, the, if people want more of, of, of a product, let's say it's shoes, right? If you let just let people decide how many shoes they want to create, then then yeah maybe it's possible in the short term somebody's going to make too many shoes and he won't have someone to sell it to but he'll find out pretty fast that yeah he made too many shoes and he'll he'll stop in other words the 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 market the 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 people human action human action will uh, gently (laughs) push people Mm -hmm. in the direction that makes them make the right choices for themselves and ultimately probably the, the right, the right uh, um, decisions that will make everybody better off. Yeah. We need shoes, but we don't need, you know, trillions of new shoes every year. Yeah. And, and yeah. same with gas, same with, with food, same with uh, everything else that we want and need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yes. Next. Next. Um, is the lack of affordable housing related to geographical preference? Um, this is a personal anecdote. I'm going to read it fast. Um, this is a personal anecdote observation, but I get more feeling from Generation mm. uh, Xers that moving to a different town for work or family was much more of a common occurrence and decisions to move to a place were based on economic, economic considerations. Even moving further suburbs and communicating seems like the more common things. There doesn't seem to have been a specific explanation expectation about where people wanted or needed to live before the house consideration. I know there is a housing supply issue, but I do not deny that and and but I don't deny that. But how much of our current housing problems stem from the fact that the many millennials seem all, to all want to live in major metro areas like New York or San Francisco and have short communes? How could someone like that be measured? Well, I, I think that the, the biggest reasons for all of the problems in the housing market are government interventionism. And when I say government, I basically mean also the, 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 the central banks and the entire control of the money system. Should people live in big cities or live on farms? Again, let the market decide. Let people do what they want to do without uh, interfering in the money supply, which artificially creates uh, uh, what we call in Austrianism, malinvestment. In other words, wrong market signals, right? Or a very, very simple metaphor. If I tell you it's raining outside and it's, it's the middle of summer and you go outside dressed very warm and with an umbrella, I made you make a wrong decision. I gave you a wrong market signal. And mm-hmm. you'll suffer because of it. You'll, you know, you'll have to waste time, go back in, you know, change your clothes, whatever. So all of this money interventionism, it causes people to make wrong decisions because of all kinds of bubbles and wrong investments. Malinvestment is, is the term we use. So I don't know if people should live in cities or on farms. I'm more of a city person myself. I like asphalt more than I like trees. <laughs> but but the, the, the true answer is free market should decide. Mm. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'd say, I'd say what happens even if more people want to live in a metro area, it increases the metro area. So there are better solutions for traffic and commute. Yes. So for example, if someone wants to work in the city, in the deep side of the city, that happens. But if you give it about five years, you'll see that another city is developing in the city in another place. Yeah. For example, I'll give an example. I, I, it happens in Israel, I think, in several places. Um, I think it's going on in Kfar Saba to some extent. 
um, like there's an industrial area in Krasaba. Okay, in Sydney, we have Sydney City, but we also have Parramatta. Mm. Okay, Parramatta is another, it's, it's a city by itself. In, in, Interesting. In its own, yeah. So what happens is people don't like the commute. Businesses understand they want good employees still. They just locate themselves in, they, locate, they want to locate themselves in, in places that are a bit further away from the center. Also cost issues, because the more center you are, the more money it costs. Yeah. So you got more businesses and more opportunities in places that are a bit farther away. Yeah. More central stations. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you just let the market do its thing. You just let the market just... do its thing. Because I mean, because uh, again, market, market forces and freedom. What will happen, let's say, when a city does start getting, let's say, too crowded and prices are too high and you can't build anymore and you can't even build uh, bigger buildings there, there, you know there comes a point where yes yeah, people will naturally say yeah we need to go out to some place uh, uh, more empty and uh, yeah it's 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 there's there's uh, disadvantages to that so but what are the advantages the advantages oh you can get something to where to live for 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 much less and who knows what's right nobody knows no. individuals nobody. doing human action everybody deciding for themselves what is best for them in non-coercive engagements and 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 amazing things work out things work out yeah things work out okay um let's go to the next one yeah right okay question regarding supply and demand okay i'm gonna make this short because it's start to get start to get to calculations and uh Right. Um, no, maybe we can go. I can go to calculations a bit. So, so see how it goes. Okay. I am learning about supply and demand and how it affects pricing. Most will say that prices should be lowered to Again, reach please. equilibrium uh, and sell all and sell all supply. But would it be advisable not to sell all your supply if it meant making more money overall? Um, is giving an example later for simplicity's sake. Let's say I have 200 units of something that I'm selling for $5 per unit. However, at $5 per unit, I would only be able to sell 100 units. If I want to sell all 200 units, I have to lower my price to $2 because that's where the equilibrium is. But if I sell all my units for $2 each, I'll make only $400 overall. Whereas I would be been I would made five hundred dollars just selling half of my supply. Would it be advised advisable to sell half of my supply for five dollars each, and lower the price each remaining unit to two dollars? I think it's a very simplistic thing what he's asking because I'm just gonna let you go for it for a second because uh, you listened and I read. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, when when ahead. we talk about equilibrium i mean we already about an hour ago we kind of proved that there really is no such thing as as stable equilibrium right because even in 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 the very simple example we gave where i have a banana and you have an orange and we mm -hmm. trade we give each other does that mean they're equal does that mean it's equilibrium no it means that you wanted my piece of fruit more than than you wanted your piece of fruit and I wanted your piece of fruit more than you wanted my piece of fruit. So we both gained. So yeah. should somebody sell a less at a higher price or more at a lower price? I don't know. I don't know what's good for him. I can, you know, if I were to investigate his business for a period of time, maybe I could yeah. give some um, more, you know, deep uh, uh, analysis. But uh yeah. Only he, only, only he knows, does he need more liquidity? If he needs more liquidity, maybe he should sell at a lower price and you know, get a lot of cash now so he can buy more things. And so it, there, there is no one answer fits all here. It, it, you know, yeah. And you know, since it were, it's really a very general question, there is no one answer. He has to look into his business, see what's best for him and, and, and uh, be willing to change if he, sees that oh maybe something else is better yeah, human action like, yeah definitely like it has what he's asking has so many uh considerations in about in about a business Are you, like after you sell these units do you want to sell more units 
Um, what is the relationship you want to have with your customer? Um, it's, it's more than just the price. Selling yeah. something is more than just the price. And if you want to reach equilibrium with the price, managing a profitable business is not just money. It sounds odd, but it's true. Okay? Like I, it's yeah, I about, just gave the example. It's liquidity. a long run. Yeah. It's a yeah. long run, yes. It's yeah. a long run thing. It's a long run thing. And it's more than just current money if you want to retain customers. If the units of what you're selling is really, really good and you have anything else developed later on, so maybe you should just sell all of them for $2. And later on, you can sell another unit for the same customers. He, should do, another money. he, he should do whatever maximizes a, his, his benefit. And I say benefit and not, not, not necessarily profit, although often they, they go together. But he yeah. should do whatever makes his life the most enjoyable. Maybe he's the kind of guy that says, you know what? I just like having customers come in and, and buy stuff all the time. They they say thank you and nice things to me. And I don't <laughs> mind selling a little bit cheaper just to, so that's why I said benefit. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I, I can give another kind of half ridiculous, but, but, but true example right now, Tom Cruise mm. and I, we both demand $20 million to be an actor in a movie. <laughs> Now, for some strange reason, Tom Cruise gets gets parts in movies and I don't. So <laughs> would I be better off if I lowered my price to maybe one dollar? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but Tom Cruise, no. his life is probably better off by saying, yeah, I, I demand $20 million for a movie. And no, there's no reason for me to accept only 10. In fact, he mm -hmm. might be better off saying, you know what, I need 30 million, whatever. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. So there, there is no one answer. You know, there's do a, a little bit of trial and error, human action, and see what mm -hmm. brings you the most benefit. And again, I use the word benefit, and not, not necessarily profit. Yeah. That's a good point. Used yeah. Benefit is not always profit. Definitely. Okay. Despite they're sometimes they usually are very close. They often, yeah, they often go hand in hand. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Why this is a this is one that we actually discussed earlier. We're going to do it again. Okay. Uh, why don't central banks just raise interest really high to make inflation go away? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, we know that the that that's they're not using the correct definition of inflation. And okay, I'm not going to go over all that again. So why do central banks not just raise interest rates to make prices stop going up? That's, that's the real question. And the reason is, yeah. is that they, they, they can't. Now that's 40 years ago, uh, Paul Volcker, the, the, the Fed uh, chairman uh, of, the, of the, Fed, the, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve in the early 1980s, he raised interest rates to about 20%. And just, you know, like a half an hour ago, we said that you know, the, even the interest rate in Australia in the early 90s, it was almost 20%. It was like 17 and percent. There's no way they can raise the interest rates to anywhere near that, probably not even half of that now, without causing the entire economy to, to crash in what I call a deflationary holocaust, where People just can't make their, their uh, mortgage payments. They can't make their business payments. They can't even make their, their rent payments because the, the money supply decreases. It actually shrinks. And there's less money. And that means there's less ability to make payments, even if somebody's being trying to be very uh, fiscally intelligent and conservative. So there's there's a deflationary co collapse. If you know, but that's where we're heading. In other words, we're at a point in time where they can't just continue this this endless cycle of inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation. The 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 uh, the area of of uh, ability to oscillate between the two is basically destroyed now. It's non-existent, and we see mm -hmm. this. In in United States, where the interest rates are, are already above two uh, percent, we see this in Australia now that it's it's not even two percent, and and prices are already going down. How much more they can can they raise interest rates interest rates in Australia? I don't know, but I I'm willing to say it's a very safe bet they can't raise them to 
10%, which, which is not even the real rate of price increases. So that's why. <coughs> I said, okay, the interest rate currently in Australia is <laughs> 1.85. Yes. I have to say, I have to say. It's not three or four percent, like I said earlier. It's one point eight five. No, I said it's one point eight five. Yeah, and uh, they're okay. probably going to raise it in a few days. I think they have a meeting in a, in a few days. Yeah. <clears throat> so they'll okay. probably raise it to another half a percent. Can they get to three? Maybe. Can they get to four? I don't know. Can they get to ten? Nah. Nah. Okay. Maybe we should buy two point five. <laughs> yeah okay um okay <coughs> real quick stupid question section okay, okay. real quick uh, you like uh yeah that part is uh i write nonsense questions um yeah they're fairly enjoyable okay. peanut butter and mayonnaise <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, i wrote that i wrote that that's one of the best that, ones yeah sorry and i love that <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Let's start with the first one. That is actually most of them are very finance related. Okay. Mm, a so degree not so in economics. Mm -hmm. Not so stupid. Should you get a degree in economics, or just start reading and working in economics yourself? I think it depends on what you want. If you want a job, then go to the university and get a degree in what they call economics, which is not really economics. They don't. They don't teach economics. In university, they teach uh, this voodoo uh, witchcraft ideology called Keynesianism, which is not economics. But but you at least you'll you'll be able so far to, to find a job. But if you really want to learn mm -hmm. economics, then then uh, study Austrian economics off the internet. You can get books for free. You can uh, pretty much anything for free. Uh, and and then you'll understand theory of money, which is 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 the name of the the lecture that I that I give. And you'll uh, then you'll understand economics. You'll understand how to uh, analyze and understand economic trends. You'll understand how to so-called see the future, predict the future, and uh, not based on any supernatural abilities, but on uh, what we call tools of thought that the mainstream mm. schools of, of so-called economics, they, they just don't have. Uh, so it depends on what you want. That's the short answer. If you want a job, go to the university. Even then, I, but I hope these people are out of a job. Yeah, but, but if you want to understand economics, no, then, 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 then study. Just study and, and uh, on your own and uh, you can get all the stuff for free on the internet. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, what about <clears throat> living in a social state or a communist state? Well, socialism and communism are the same. There is no difference. Yeah, yeah we went over that. So, yeah, yeah. like that's I said, somebody, I somebody, somebody that says that he he loves socialism but hates communism is entirely nonsensical. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Um, I think we asked, I asked it in another time. We're just doing the English version of it. Sure. But just interesting. Financial freedom or freedom of speech? The two are I, not entirely unconnected, but if I, let's say, try and, and look at them as separate issues where I have to choose one, I would say financial freedom. In other words, if somebody says to me, Tal, you have no taxes, you have no regulations, you have a, a entire freedom to do any business with you, with that you want, and the government is not going to uh, bother you, but you can't talk about it on the internet for some strange reason, I would say, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the financial freedom. But, you know, in a real world, that's kind of a, a ridiculous situation. It's, it's, uh, how could you have all of this financial freedom, but no freedom of speech? It, it kind of doesn't make sense. But, but OK, maybe that's why it's a stupid question. But, but, but mm -hmm. if to give a, a serious answer, yeah, I would, I, I, I would choose the financial freedom. Because Man, I'm so, I'm so <laughs> happy right now. Why is that? I can't complain. <laughs> I'm so, yeah, I'm so, excellent. 
Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, what what, uh, what what would make me better that that I'm free to 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 become as as uh, successful as I want and as wealthy as I want, uh, and and nobody's gonna try and no no government is gonna try and steal my money. I just can't talk about it, <laughs> or only with my friends, or or as they you know used to say in Soviet Russia, only with your wife under the 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 the, the blanket at, at at night, and even then maybe the kids are are listening to. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I would prefer oh that. God, I... I would I would prefer that over being a slave that that can mm. say anything I want about the government, but yeah, I'm I'm still a slave. Yeah, but uh... okay. cool, cool. That's cool. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Non non uh, non financial or philosophical questions related. Milk chocolate or white chocolate. I'm going to go with white chocolate. I don't know why. Okay. I, I, I'm going to go it's, with it's, milk it's chocolate. Not, it's not a racist thing. <laughs> it's no, not, it's not. It's, it's not. not. It's really not. <laughs> it's not a racist thing. I, I don't know. I like milk chocolate more. I like cho milk chocolate more because it's just, you know, white chocolate sometimes could be a bit too sweet. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There, there too is sweet. that. Milk, yeah. cho milk chocolate sometimes is too sweet, but regular, regularly I can handle it. Yeah. But I had to think, it's like they're both good choices. So yeah, but uh, yeah, went with the white chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Next non-financial question, no, non-philosophical or economist question. Yeah. Riding a snowboard without knowing what you're doing. For a whole day, you have to ride a snowboard without knowing what you're doing. Or getting into a martial art battle with a professional MMA fighter for a minute. Well, is the professional fighter trying to hurt me or is he just kind of trying to teach me? <laughs> trying, uh, trying to hurt you, trying to hurt you. There's no, a referee, well, though. Then, I, then I'll take the, What's that? He's trying to There's hurt me. There's a referee, though. There's a referee. There's a referee. Is a referee going to stop the minute? Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you get know. knocked out, you're going to, it's going to stop. I think I'll take the, 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 the snowboarding. Really? I'll take the professional fight. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to run a lot. Ah, okay. I'm going to run a lot and I'm going to pretend I'm going to do, I know what I'm doing for a long time. Okay. Hopefully I have some preparation. I have some preparation for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're done. I think we're done. I want to say uh, thank you very much. This is uh, this is the fourth time you were you're with us. I think we had another three so. times in Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, definitely been very interesting to have you here. I listened to the other three, by the way. I uh, I enjoy them. Next and, time we do in Swahili, yeah. right? The next time is in uh... <laughs> definitely Espanol. Yo que tu quiero. Well, let's go for the exotic know. languages. You know, and, make it interesting. Uh, yeah, sure. Just want to say thank you. And of course, uh, all these people of you that listening out there, you can uh, like, subscribe and share and uh, check out our other platforms. And um, we do have podcasts in English. We have several of them. We have one with uh, uh, one that just comes up to mind with uh, Benjamin Ezzi's about education, which is less economical, but also is another one. Yes. Um, and, and yes, we'll continue to have these kind of sessions uh, very soon. Todaraba, thank you very much. Um, and uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Press the recording stuff. <laughs> <laughs>